Let's go. Do you want to make the introduction? No, I think it's <sighs> like you're the best. Why? Why always That's the me? one thing you do well. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, I'll do that then. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Banton Experience. Uh, we are coming to you guys from Tokyo. Uh, my hotel room. It's very nice. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, uh, sure. Thanks for coming. It's actually the first time on this trip that I'm in your room. Yeah, and it's also the last time, guys. So, uh, yeah, I do not want to see hands much. Um, besides, when we're making these uh, podcast recordings, we're not really that good friends. People no, tend to yeah. think that we are, but uh, yeah. I would actually say we're not even friends. No, no, no. we try to distance each this this distant distance each other. Yeah, distance from each other a little bit. Yeah. We we see each other plenty. So yeah, uh, true. No, but here we are. We just wanted to uh, to give you guys a like midway update here from the world championships um and uh, unfortunately we we have plenty of time because <laughs> both of us and we can talk a bit about that both of us decided to lose the first round mm. um you lost then i entered the court the, the the next match on the same court and lost as well yeah so, uh, that was a bad stretch for uh, for our coaches as well because right before me lena castle played so it was three days in a row on the same court losing uh in straight games actually that's uh that was, should, should we just like first of all uh explain or talk a little bit about our own experience here uh, playing yeah Tokyo. let's do that let's can you start that. i'll start i'll start uh well i got hammered i'd yeah. say that i lost like I, I don't even know i think it was 10 and 12 something like that against the laksha sin uh who is obviously in good shape and everything uh so it's not it's not that it's much of a surprise that i would lose but i actually believe that i had a chance uh, i had a shot against him um, but yeah, never got my game uh, going. He played really well. I think his defense was, yeah, outrageously good. Uh, and at the same time, uh, he was also playing really fast. And I made just a ton of errors, uh, especially on my attack, which is partly due to the fact that his defense was so good. So I was getting a little bit too eager. But I also just never really found um, like the calmness I needed to have on court to have any kind of chance. So when he's playing well. And I'm playing bad. That's a, uh, a very bad combination. If I need to have a chance, I need to obviously play my very best. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, so I, yeah, I was quite disappointed actually because okay. I, I feel good. My body felt great. Uh, I think my training has been mm. quite good as well. Yeah. So, yeah. and that that's also one of the I mean really tough parts about I mean sport and this life in general is that I I personally believe that watching you this summer, I think you put it in you 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 put a lot of effort into the training mm -hmm. and I think you did well um, and then just to, to fly out here and lose the first round it's just it's it can be so tough yeah. um, and it, it ju it's just it's just the life I mean mm -hmm. yeah and I, I like it's not even losing that hurts me so bad it's it's more the fact that I didn't play nearly at the level I, I would want to yeah because I can obviously I can accept losing to Lakshya even if I play well because he is one of the very best players in the world. Um, so I know that's even a risk that if I play my best I still don't win. Uh, but it's just you get this feeling of, of uh, it's so like an unfulfilled feeling that you you put so so much work into it and you you don't get any kind of uh, reward. Yeah, uh, I, I I get it one hundred percent. And um, I think in the last episode I talked a bit about. Uh, the the first part of this year for me personally mm. where i also had this feeling of i did everything that i could in my everyday life and in my training try try to optimize everything mm. and then i kind of felt like okay then the results should follow as well mm. uh, but they didn't and that was so frustrating yeah um so it's just it's really not given that just because you are training well mm. and feeling that you're well prepared that you are going to perform well on the court but also your opponent is probably doing the same so definitely yeah. It's, 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 it's yeah there's it's, just no guarantees no I, i'm really trying to remember that this training that i've done for the past five six weeks it, like it's not wasted just because no. i didn't play well here i think we spoke about that in one of the early episodes as well that when you do these long training stints it will hopefully benefit you in the long run mm. as well we have japan open coming up but there's also denmark open french open there's lots of events still coming up so hopefully yeah i can get some rewards there yeah that, that's what i'm trying to remind myself that it's it's not over just no. because i i didn't perform well here but i also feel like that's one of the reasons why it's really important to kind of appreciate the the journey leading up to the tournament mm. i mean the yeah, 
all the work that you have been putting in, if it's just, I mean, only to get the results, mm. then it's going to be tough when then when you don't get the results. So so hopefully you also enjoy like the process of working with mm. with the people around you and, and and all the hard work and in training and that should be fun and enjoyable as well. Mm. Um, otherwise, it can be a extremely tough. Tough, yeah tough life yeah definitely definitely because there will be a probably at least for a guy like me there will be more disappointments compared to like wins of tournaments like i don't i don't even win a tournament every year <laughs> <laughs> no no i mean you usually you end up losing uh, yeah. at every single tournament yeah exactly, <laughs> so, exactly true. i mean un- unless you're a victor th- yeah. then you probably lose every <laughs> single tournament yeah. and that's the that's the tough tough thing about badminton i mean mm. I, I, I guess in a, in a sport like uh, boxing, you you only fight like mm. half every half a year or something mm. like that. Um, but yeah, I, I think <laughs> then yeah, you can go on a very long winning streak if yeah, if you sure. are set up against the right opponents yeah. and stuff. But I guess in that sport, it's also even more important to appreciate the journey if you then lose. <laughs> yeah, I mean here we get here we get like a million chances. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> You lose and then you have a chance against the next yeah, week. Yeah. Those sports is kind of like if you lose a few in a row, then you you might be done. Yeah, so uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's it's definitely important to be able to to brush those uh, defeats off of you mm. uh, and 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 kind of uh, move on. Um, have you done that? So you lost as well. Yeah, early. Let's talk about that as well. Yeah. I lost w- in the first round. You didn't really seem to have high expectations no. uh, from the last podcast no. and what you've been saying in the press as well. No. No. So I mean. I guess that's also one of the reasons why I'm not that down and out. I'm mm. not that disappointed as I usually would be. Um, so I lost to to Kenta Nishimoto in the first round. I think it was like the scores scores was fifteen and nineteen. I lost in straight games. Um, in the beginning, I felt like not really comfortable on court. Mm. Um, I was down like seven fourteen in the first game or something like that. Um, so it just felt a little uncommon for me. It felt like it's been a long time, uh, which is it has has yeah. been a long time since I've uh, played a match. Um, and what's the last time actually? I think it was back in March uh, at the Thailand Open, wasn't that March? May. May. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, May. After May. Thomas May. Club, I meant yeah, May. Yeah. May yeah. Um, yeah, that's a long time. Three months. It's it's been a long time, and not even in. I mean, not to, to sit here and come up with a bunch of excuses, but not even in in training. I, yeah. I haven't even played a match in training, other than a few sh- sets here and there. It's not excuses. It's more like explanations as to why you're not at your best. It's a combination. Yeah. Let's yeah. just oh, call right. it that. Fair enough. Um. No, but I mean, I wasn't. I was disappointed, obviously I wanted to win and I felt like even though with my lack of preparation, I still felt that my level on the the day was enough to Mm. actually get the win Mm. and obviously I was very close in the second game. Mm. Um, So I just felt like I was getting more and more into my rhythm and playing better and better. So I was quite disappointed that I did not get the match into three games Mm. because I felt like that that set could have been mine and i could yeah. have continued on this i mean building building myself uh building myself up um but yeah. step by step yeah i mean but kenzo nishimoto is a solid player he played well mm. um he he, he 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 made it difficult for me but uh, i definitely feel like there was elements in my mm. game which worked well um there was a uh, moments of good play mm um obviously not consistent enough mm. and I, un, and I didn't really had that uh, feeling of just knowing what to do all the time yeah uh, and I think you have that feeling when you're really in match uh, form yeah and when you have confidence from winning matches like you just do everything naturally because yeah, exactly you don't yeah. have to think yeah. so yeah I mean I, I I feel like I I cannot allow myself to be that disappointed yeah. Everything, Makes sense. everything um, with with my preparation and stuff. So would you actually say you go into Japan Open more positive than you went into the World Championships, or is it the same? You yeah. still feel. I mean, I was very uncertain here. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I I had I had low expectations. I didn't knew um, my level at all. Uh, yeah. Now I have kind of like a feeling. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, once again, I don't have much expectations yeah, yeah. Uh, at the Japan Open but yeah this this was a beginning for me it was good to be back on court 
uh, as mentioned, I played fine at times, certain times I didn't, um, but this was my, my start and I'm okay with it. And hopefully I will move on from here. Mm. Uh, hopefully it will get better from here, but I know that there's still a long way to go uh, to, to get back to my, my old level um, and then hopefully build upon that uh, afterwards. Yeah. But um, it's a start. It's a start, and it's I'm happy to be back again. So yeah. Yeah. that was um, that was a bit about us. Um, but yeah. I, I guess how was the experience playing in in the arena? Mm, yeah, well, I've played here a few times before yeah. uh, for Japan. Have you? I have. Last time yeah. was in 2018. 18. Yeah. I've never done well here. Yeah. I think I've lost okay. in first round or yeah. qualification every single time okay. in this hall. I've actually had some good experiences. Uh, yeah, in the past, and I, I actually I like the hall. But I, I never felt comfortable in, in this match. Uh, I was also under stress all the time, but I never got this feeling of great timing or anything. Uh, but I think it's a really nice hole. I think the setup was very nice. Yeah. There's a little bit of drift, but I don't think it was anything like crazy. Uh, it's a huge arena. Huge um, arena. For, for the people watching, if you don't know, it's a very big arena and it's kind of like All England. You get All England yeah. vibes a little it's bit. It's kind of the same, yeah. Yeah. Not, not a huge crowd it's been okay so far but as always in japan that they're, they're like they're very quiet mm. it's a like it's a it's a different atmosphere compared to some other arenas yeah but i think everything here has been well arranged and like uh, everything has been going according to plan but i think that's always the case in japan yeah. they uh, they're very organized it's general. it's it's so fun to travel to these this uh, different uh, like uh, countries and, yeah. and cultures i mean this place compared to indonesia it's just so different yeah. i mean everything here is like there's so many rules mm. and it's just yeah. like you just follow the rules so yeah. that's what i'm trying to say i mean there's and you, you can't you can't more you, just following the flow yeah <laughs> and, and, i mean the, the people are way different yeah. um it's just you cannot bend the rules yeah. uh, just a tiny bit here yeah. Yeah. it's just it is how it is yeah. i mean and uh it's it it's it's fun people but people are so respectful it's uh it's 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 quite amazing it's I, I actually i i spoke to uh, tony gunawan once because he, he used to be coaching in japan and he's obviously indonesian uh, and he's also been coaching some in indonesia uh, and i was trying to ask him about the difference between those two cultures because for me that are actually the to two most uh like like the opposite mm -hmm. uh, cultures and he said it was it was yeah, so easy to see in the way they were training as well that when you're training in Japan, they're like they're almost afraid of making mistakes because you, you just need to like keep going, keep within the rules and like do everything perfect. You cannot mm -hmm. make a mistake. Whereas in Indonesia, they're like playing around, fooling around, and you you actually have to risk making mistakes mm -hmm. because you you want to do like crazy and fun stuff all the time. And you so, can see that in in their way of playing as well. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. I mean the if you compare these two countries uh, i mean the japanese players is like really strict on a game plan mm. um and where the indonesians is like more a little bit more playful on yeah, court sure. taking bigger risks um yeah. sometimes it's going really well sometimes not so well yeah. where the, the the japanese style is like there's one route and we just follow that one yeah. and usually they are very like consistent yeah you uh, kind of know what level you get yeah, yeah and it's it's always high it yeah. is yeah I've been eating so much sushi. Yeah, it's amazing. It's it's unbelievable. so good. I unbelievable. <laughs> That's no. bad timing. Yeah. Now, now now the the cleaning staff is waiting outside of the door. Should we wait on until they come in and then tell them <laughs> no, or should I just come back later? <laughs> should I just tell them? Uh, yeah, I, I'll hold this for you. <laughs> So guys, I'll just keep you keep you entertained for for a little while while Hans Christian. Ah, it's Kim Astrup. <laughs> it is cleaning. Hey Kim. <laughs> we just said that it was the the cleaning staff. It wasn't even the cleaning. It's just the men's double player Kim Astrup. Okay, anyways. No, the the fish here is so incredible. It's. I mean, I've been eating sushi like twice a day and I could continue forever. Yeah, but you can continue for one more week. I'm sure it's great in Osaka as well. Yeah, because after the World Championships, we go to Osaka uh, to play the Japan Open. And I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, obviously, I love Tokyo, but it's also going to be fun to 
see another city than Tokyo. I have never been elsewhere in 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 in, uh, in Japan. So yeah, me neither. Me neither. I'm really excited about yeah. that. Actually, it's going to be fun. Yeah. But Hans Christian, uh, one of the reasons why we did this podcast was also to take the audience um, through some of the results here during yeah. the world championships mm-hmm. what is um what has been done and, and what can we look forward to um mm-hmm. today is quarterfinal day yeah i hope that we will get to release this podcast just in a few hours but some of the matches that we might talk about might already have been played by the time the audience watch this um yeah. Episode. That's just how it is, guys. But yeah, we are recording in the middle of uh, quarterfinal day, so some matches have already been played from quarterfinals. Some quarterfinals are yet to be played when we are recording. Yeah, there was a few upsets yesterday. It was a big in, day for upsets, yeah. especially in the most mostly in the men's singles category, mm-hmm. and uh, we do not have time to touch on all five categories. As always, we'll prioritize men's singles a little bit. Um, sorry if you are a, a big fan of the other categories. Uh, we like them as well, but obviously two men's singles players just love, love to talk about men's singles. But um, Lizzy Jia, the Malaysian uh, favorite, mm-hmm. um, lost to Sh- Xiao Zhongping yeah. from China. 21-19 yeah. in the third game. That was a... That was a bit surprising, I would say. Yeah, it was in the middle of our training session, so we didn't get to watch the match. Uh, but yeah, I was definitely expecting uh, Lee Sijia to win that one. Um, besides Victor, I thought he was uh, the best choice for a gold medal here. Um, but I, I also tend to underestimate the Sao Yinping, actually. Uh, I was surprised when he made the final of Indonesia Open, and now he's again producing great results. Uh, so I think it's about time that I... Uh, I give him a little bit more credit than I have in the past. Uh, I actually asked our coach Kenneth yesterday what it is he's doing so well, um, and he didn't have time to tell me yesterday. But he said over a beer someday he would uh, he would tell me. So mm. that's gonna be interesting. Yeah. Uh, I think I, he's I, very like just very solid, kind of unimpressed, just giving it a hundred percent. I when I saw that they were going to play each other, I I thought to myself that this might be a, a tricky one for Lucy Jia. Yeah. I saw, obviously, he was in the final at the Indonesian Open, uh, mm. Xiao Jongping. Mm. Uh, he defeated Jonathan Christie twice. Yeah. And uh, and Jonathan has been playing very well this year. True. So, yeah. he's, um, he, he's been doing well. Um, the, yeah, Xiao Jongping. Yeah, one thing I like about him is I saw an interview yesterday he did with, the, I think it was BWF or some, something. Uh, he did it in Chinese, obviously, but there's a profile on Twitter where they translate uh, what all the Chinese players are saying. And he, he was really like carrying him, himself quite well and he was quite open and uh, like smiling and giving yeah, lots of gestures. Mm, nice, so like nice. he was not like yeah, this monotone uh, interview. It was, uh, yeah, it was quite interesting. Cool. Actually. Yeah. But it must be, it must be a tough one for Lucy Jia. Obviously he has been prioritizing the world championships mm. uh, a lot since he withdrew from the Commonwealth Games. Yeah. I assume that that, uh, that was the reason that he wanted yeah. to prioritize this. Um, That's what he said in the media. I saw that okay. he also got some uh, critique yesterday from some angry fans, of course. Uh, but I think in, in general, like like we spoke about before, there's no guarantees. Even if you prioritize something oh. really highly, uh, there's no guarantees that you're going to perform. Uh, I'm sure for him, he will still believe it was the right thing to do. Uh, yeah. 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 It um yeah that was one of the upsets. Um, yeah, there was what another one with the all Indian affair with the uh, Laksha Sen against Pranoy, and I think yeah. it's fair to say now that Pranoy he's a giant killer. Like he beat Momota as well in the second round, and now he beat Laksha yesterday, twenty one seventeen in the third. Yeah, he's always been kind of like a giant killer. Yeah, yeah, I think we mentioned him as well in yeah. the last podcast, didn't we? think we did but I, I just remember like back in the days he was a player who could beat uh, those guys Lin Dan Chen Long yeah. Li Chang Wei um, which not many players could um, beat Victor and on Bali he did yeah um, so he, he I mean he has become really strong again mm. uh, I think he, he was sick a few years ago right yeah sick or injured or something yeah maybe he was sick I think he was out for, for quite a while but he has definitely stepped up his yeah. game uh, I think Without uh, spoiling anything, I think we're going to get him on the podcast, right? We Something. have actually uh, made a deal with him. Yeah, we don't know exactly when it's going to be. It was supposed to be before the World Championships, but uh, we didn't really have time. And then he agreed to still come on at some point, so he will be on. Uh, so it wouldn't 
I wouldn't mind if he won the world champion. <laughs> so we could have a world champion on, but yeah. <laughs> no, that'd, that'd we'll be see. Fine. He's actually playing uh, Sao Yunping now in the quarterfinal. Yeah. Those two guys are playing each other. Who do you think uh, will win? Who will go in as the favorite? <sighs> well, they played each other in Indonesia Open in the semifinal as well. Uh, and I had Pranoy as the favorite there. But as I said before, I, I think I tend to underestimate uh, Sao Yunping a little bit. Um, I think I'm. I think I'm gonna go with Pano again. Actually, I think it's a close call. Uh, he won quite convincingly the last time, uh, Sao Yunping. Um, but I think when you've beaten Mimosa and when you've beaten Laksha two matches in a row, I think you're showing great consistency at that your level is really high. So yeah, if he can uh, if he can keep it together, I yeah. think he's a favorite for me at least. Mm. But I also have to say I think it's a very very open match. They obviously both of. Both of them is is uh, coming from uh, kind of like a, a, an upset. Um, mm. Yeah, I also need to give, give Sal more credit actually because he beat Slikant quite convincingly the day before Li Shijia. He did. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So In both of them games. is coming from like two very good wins um, yeah. for them. And, and it, no it, it, medals for either of them in the past, right? So okay. they're also playing for the first medal. Interesting. I mean, it it is. Um, it can be kind of hard to like reset. Mm. after a big yeah. win because it, it I mean you can still be like so happy about it and thinking about it and um, and then you kind of like have to reset uh, mm. and then start all over again how many times haven't you seen a player beating yeah. beating someone uh, mm. where they 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 were the the underdog mm. and then the next day they lose to someone where you think if he could beat that guy yeah. why can't he beat that guy yeah. so I think That's um, true. There's a lot on the line for both these players, um, as you mentioned. None of them um, has a, a world championship medal yet, and um, and they're also coming from two very good victories in yeah. a row. So, I'll go with uh, Xiao Jungping just so we don't have the same. That that would That's be good. boring. Yeah. So uh, we'll That's we'll good. we'll we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. I think apart from that one, I think the other quarterfinal I'm looking forward to the most in the men's singles. Victor against Ginting. Yeah. And that's like, obviously, I know Victor has won the last few times, um, but I actually don't think Victor has been looking great in this World Championship. I know he's won all his matches in straight games, which I think just says a lot about what his level is at. Like, he's so strong, he's so consistent, but I don't feel like we've seen him play his best yet. Um, and I feel like with the win Ginting got against uh, uh, Shiyuki, that he must be in great shape I didn't watch the match so I can't really say how it went on but I think there is a chance that, that Ginting actually uh, could create an upset uh, in this one if Victor does not up his level there is also a chance he can do that for sure it's the first time he's playing an absolute world class player um, in the championship but yeah I, I think it's going to be very interesting to, to see that one so he's 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 been winning in straight games uh, yeah. both his matches, uh, Victor. No. Three matches, right? Three matches, yeah. yeah. His first three matches. Um, against Darren, Kaljao, and Thomasin. But it, it's it's been a little bit close in some of the sets. Mm -hmm. Twenty one nineteen against uh, Kaljo. Yeah. Um. Also against Thomasin yesterday, actually. Okay. It was also twenty one nineteen, and against Darren in the first match, he was down sixteen fifteen in the first game. Yeah. So. Of, again he's winning and he's winning convincingly yeah. so I'm not saying he's bad or anything no, no, no. I just don't feel like we've seen the same version of Victor as we've seen uh, previously this year I think sometimes it, it, it comes quite uh, naturally when you're facing a better opponent mm. your, your, your system your mm. mind kind of like knows that this is the time to step up yeah. and then it just happens yeah. um, you just become more alert yeah I don't, I don't know I mean I've tried it plenty of times um, playing against uh, a guy that I was the big fa favorite against, yeah, yeah. And then it wasn't really that good. You came out with a feeling like, yeah, I won, but I mm. never really played mm. well. Mm. Then the next day you are facing a tough opponent, and you just you just switch on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, some some something just happened to you. Mm. Um, but I agree with you. Ginseng is definitely the a guy um, who can make a big upset. Mm. And, the type of player he is, um, when it's going well, it's really going well. Mm. He has been facing Victor a few times uh, in the, the last few months. Uh, last time they, they played a free set match. Yeah. So I think that can also help him him help him a little bit. You know that feeling of getting a bit of success. Mm, yeah. So you gain some confidence. A like little you bit. Yeah. Have a chance. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I mean, 
if he if he had lost the the last few encounters like straight games having no chance mm. it um would have been more difficult for him so he got a little bit of success last time they played he mm. won one set so i think that yeah, could, that could give him some belief yeah, yeah true um it's 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 going to be a fun match um but just i mean i saw that they are also going to face each other in the quarterfinal next week okay so oh, i mean yeah. there's as mentioned before there's something wrong with that <laughs> drawing system that yeah. algorithm yeah so i mean he needs to beat him at some point if yeah. he wants to to, but to ne- move on in the tournaments next week there's like a zero percent chance victor is going to make the quarterfinal and why is that hans christian because he's playing shiyuki second round and shiyuki is going to beat me in the first round ah okay no. i thought it was because you were facing yeah. him in the if i beat round. shiyuki i'm playing victor yeah and you will you will that's the plan um so no victor and Ginting is going to be interesting um yeah. i don't know you mentioned that Ginting had a a tough free set match uh, yesterday against Shiyuki. Yeah. Um. He was. He was. I think he was down eighteen fifteen in the third game. Yeah, eighteen sixteen. I think it was. Okay. Maybe eighteen fifteen. I think eighteen okay. fifteen. Okay. And I'll then, give you that. I don't know for sure. <laughs> I'm not hundred percent sure either, but I think so. And then, then he won twenty one eighteen or twenty one nineteen. Twenty one eighteen. So yeah, quite impressive. Yeah. Um. So yeah, because yeah. I actually think Shiyuki, yeah, Shiyuki had been looking uh, quite good in his match against Gemke. Uh, yeah, he was playing really fast, so it was in that way it was good to see him back. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. What else? What else? It was a tough training session for us yesterday, guys. We were training in the evening <laughs> yeah. while these matches were going on. Yeah. So I mean, it was be- bad timing. Between every round, we went to the <laughs> to the to the to the screens and kind of yeah. like. Looking for the scores. Looking for yeah. the scores and uh, yeah. yeah, it was. It I got was, to was watch tough. the match point from Sao Yunping. Uh, yeah, because that was on the screen as well. So I did. I watch one point. Yeah, Logan Yu still in the tournament. Yeah, he's going to play against uh, Kunlevud. Yeah, Kunlevud. He, oh, I saw his second game against uh, Nishimoto mm-hmm. yesterday. His defense was outrageous. Yeah. like he was playing such a stable game and still creating points as well. And yeah. I think that could be a really nice match, and I think like low, like the conditions are. I wouldn't say similar to Spain, but it's a little bit like it. I, I think that's that suits him quite well. I think that could be a fun match too. No doubt about it. I, I would have low as the favorite for that one. Okay, it's. I mean, I I, I think we've been talking about Kunlevud for a long time. That mm-hmm. he's definitely on the rise. Yeah. Um, just a very very solid player. You really trust his uh, like physique and mm-hmm. his uh, like just rally style of playing um he has gotten huge legs though yeah i mean his legs is like really really big yeah massive yeah but he's a he, he's a strong young player it's yeah. going to be a very very fun match yeah can we can we go and watch them or is it during training once again yeah, i'm or? not sure we're training in the evening again uh, mm. but i'm not sure about the plan uh, annoying yeah but yeah and nice. the, the final one is uh that's christy and cho right so that's another two really strong guys i would say it's you're <laughs> real if you like men single you're really in for a treat yeah. i mean there is four amazing men single matches coming up um yeah. the only shame is that we are not in them yeah so then it um, would have been even better no. but even for us for us to yeah. uh, as badminton fans it's going to be really fun to watch that's uh, not one of them i wouldn't want to watch no yeah so that's amazing it's 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 very it's very uh, exciting yeah. um so we we had like lizzie ja as as one of the guys to beat uh victor mm. on his best days mm. laksha maybe also he did it back in in, in, in german sure. open yeah. so ginseng has a chance uh, mm. on his very best days and mm. if victor is not hitting his absolute best mm. i think ginseng has a chance who else who's still left in the draw can, well, can Christy has it. given him some trouble uh, lately as well that that will be the semi-final opponent I think if it's Christy there's a small chance mm. if it's Cho without disrespecting him I don't really see him beating uh, Victor he's really been struggling against Victor uh, for a long time now uh, and with the conditions here I don't see it at all because it's very like it's still rather slow uh, so he will really have trouble scoring points on mm. Victor um, I think that's going to be the like the, the issue for everyone, and yeah, it al- yeah. it always is obviously. It is, it is. Yeah, it's always difficult to score points uh, on Victor. Loken you also has the speed to do it. Yeah, I think from the bottom half, it's either him or uh, Pranoy, and Pranoy I only say that because he beat him in Bali, so obviously mm. he he has got something that can uh, yeah. shuffle uh, Victor. I think Sao Yunpeng, 
will be difficult like we saw in Indonesia he had a lot of trouble scoring points um, and he's the final guy from the bottom that's Kunle uh, who also has had trouble when he's played Victor uh, so I still have Victor as the overwhelming favorite no doubt about that um, yeah I think I we'll, think we'll see the, the, today. the problem for I mean Christy Cho um, Kunle Wood Pranoy mm. is that I don't think their attack is good enough to score points on Victor where Loken Yu and uh, Ginting and yeah. Lisi Jars is like very very good on their best days Yeah. and I think if you just play like rally style mm. with Victor around the court try to like run him down uh, you'll have a hard time yeah. um, but obviously At these guys is in really really good shape yeah. so Pranoy, Kunlevut, uh, Laksha was also one of them yeah. it's, it's all players who really can run for a long time mm. And if Victor is not at his at his best, then maybe that's a possibility to go that way. It, it might be. I mean, it was it was a it was how Momota used to beat Victor back in the days um, a few True. years ago. True. But he was kind of like the only player who could really do that because his defense was so insane. Yeah. Um, yeah. His quality in every stroke. But yeah. yeah, I mean, I would say I have Victor as a big favorite yeah. um, to to win his, uh, his second world championship title, but. I mean, there's still some tough guys, some very tough guys in in the in in the draw. It's going to be no doubt interesting for sure. No doubt, no doubt. Um, Kevin and Marcus, number one seeded, best in the world, men's double. They lost to Sean Bendy, Ben Lane. Yeah, and they not even like not only lost, like they got killed basically. I think they lost fifteen and eight, something like yeah, that. It was crazy. Yeah, it, was it was quite. quite I, I didn't. I'm shopping. actually happy to say I didn't watch that. I, I'm. Uh, not to discredit uh, Ben and Sean, but I don't think it it can have been like a great match to uh, to watch. Um, like actually, the like most of the men's doubles quarterfinals have already been played while we're recording, and there will be like an all Indonesian affair anyway, because Alfiana and Arianzo made the semi final, uh, and they will play Asan and Sechilan. Mm. So uh, we needed to get that in because I'm very impressed with Asan and Sechilan. Uh, they just destroyed uh, the second in the Indian pair today, uh, Druf and Kapila, eight and fourteen. Yeah. Um, but they still haven't lost a world championship match together, Asan and Sechilan. Before this tournament, they were fifteen and zero in matches at the world championships. They've played the world championship th- three times as a pair. They won three times. Wow. And now they are on <laughs> their ru- on the route straight to the final again so if they can beat Alfiana and Arianza they will have a shot of going four world championships together as a pair and four That's gold crazy. medals that will be insane they just I mean continue forever it's absolutely yeah. insane yeah that's that's crazy I saw Hassan he has five world championships in total uh, like he played the world champion he, five times and he has five medals and I think Hassan was at six times and five medals so yeah. crazy yeah absolutely insane I mean, yeah, I would like to see their like a uh, metal uh, well, <laughs> cabinet. Sorry. Cabinet is yeah. that the word? Yeah, at least you say that with like a trophy cabinet where yeah, you, where you put them. Like uh, yeah. It must be quite incredible to yeah. watch. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, with five categories, we could dig into a lot of different uh, matches and mm. matchups. Um, but I think we wanted to to touch on the men's singles the most. Mm. Um, so do you have anything anything to add here? I'm I'm kind of happy with it. There's just one thing I yeah. want to add from the women's singles. Yeah. From yesterday, uh, Carolina Marin. Yeah. I, I don't think she's been, uh, after her comeback uh, from her second time out with the knee, I don't think we've seen her back at her best level. But yesterday, she beat Hipping Zhang from China after being down 2016 in the final game. Uh, and from what I've seen, I've only seen highlights, but it seemed like her speed is kind of back. So if she can put it all together I think she's going to be really dangerous in this tournament now also because she's had this experience now where she she was almost out of it survived and now she's into the matches where you play for medals and she has three world championship goals already so she has the experience I think she's uh, really one to watch in the women's singles she's really good at, at playing championships she is you, you feel like she uh, like game right game. rises to the occasions every yeah. single time yeah. she has won multiple world championships and also won the Olympics mm. Obviously, she has been dealing with in, in injuries in both knees uh, for yeah. for the last couple of years, and we haven't seen her back at her best. Um, she is like almost not been playing. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, very interesting. Who who is she going to play against today? 
Yeah, I'm actually not sure today uh, who's she playing. I should have checked that before I mentioned Damn it, Hans, that's yeah. your role on the that's podcast. You need to know absolutely yeah. everything. That is bad. That's what the fans is commenting yeah. all the time, that yeah. your banter knowledge is insane. <laughs> and it kind of pisses me off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know this one, but I also have to say, I still hope that Tai Su Ying is going to be the winner of the entire event. Okay. Yeah. I still hope that. Good I luck. think she deserves that gold. Yeah. It will be it will be nice. Yeah. For her. Yeah. True. So uh, I guess that's it guys. Um we just wanted to to give you guys a, a short update here from Tokyo since we had the time and since we always want to to love these episodes. Kind of like a a low budget one today. Um just a recording on an iPhone and Hans Christian brought these uh, small mics. I hope that it works. Um We'll see. I don't know. We'll we'll see. Hopefully, this will go online uh, just in a few hours. So, uh, so yeah. Thank you for watching this uh, different episode of the Badminton Experience. And um, yeah, tune in to watch some amazing badminton the next couple of days. Uh, you are in for a treat if you are a badminton lover, and I assume you are since you are here watching the Badminton Experience. Probably. Yeah. So uh, thank you guys, and um, see you. See you. Bye guys. Bye guys. <laughs>